hi welcome back to artist way week five high five we made it bitches yes even though it's not the halfway point we still made it to week five and we're still going it's only up from here boys it's only up from here but yes welcome to week five i'm so excited that you're here today i thought it would be cool to do something a little bit different i wanted to switch it up a little bit because the way i was editing the four past videos they were cool they were great it served its purpose but today i want to do something different so you're gonna be seeing my face for the rest of the video and I'm kind of just going to be like talking through the tasks that I did and just the whole process and whatever I thought when I was doing the task or whatever I thought about the week in general. I feel like this way it's just a little bit more personal and like I could really get into it, you know, because a voiceover is great. We love her. But for all the time, I don't know. It's just that sometimes I feel like it's better to do a little one on one chat you know so that's what we're gonna be doing today and i'm so excited that you're here so without further ado let's get into the video before we even start i just want to mention that this mic is not even plugged in i'm just using it as a prop because i want something to hold you know and i don't want to hold a plushie so i'm gonna hold a mic that's not plugged in you're probably like Shadi, why don't you just plug it in and just use the mic regular so you can still hold it i don't feel like it and i don't feel like trying to sync the audio with the video later on in post so i'm just gonna hold the mic and pretend like i'm using it it's a little secret between me and you Okay. This week was very interesting. I would say week five is about recovering a sense of possibility. I really like this week because I think I might have mentioned or I might have journaled. I don't know, girl. I just be talking a lot in a lot of different forms. But I might have mentioned in a previous video or I might have journaled that sometimes I feel like I can't achieve certain things. And this week was about recovering that sense that I could. It also talks about like what's holding you back and why you aren't achieving your goals. Another thing that this week also touches on is the fact that you are in a way limiting yourself and the good that you can receive. You're like, well, I can't do this because I haven't received this or I can't pursue this because it's out of my reach. It also talks about accepting where you are now and even though it appears to be good but it's not like the full potential it could be like it's good but you're not remaining truthful to yourself and it's not really authentic for you to you however you want to perceive it there's a few tasks where it can get pretty introspective and like you really think about your habits the way you just live your life and just how you are in general and trying to break down why you're in your own way another thing with this week is there were two different exercises that i did before i actually got into my five tasks for the week first exercise was a virtue quiz so an example would be i get sad when dot 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 the point of the two exercises in the beginning is to speed write how you feel so you don't like think about it too hard and like, want to change your answer blah 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 the whole thing is supposed to be done very quickly you're just supposed to read the question and write whatever comes up and that's it which I really like because I can get into my own head sometimes and it's just like, wow, I don't really know. Like, I'm not sure if this answers exactly how I feel or maybe I should add this to it or maybe I should take away this from it. With this exercise, you just have to write your answer and just keep going until you finish and that is it. So that's what I did. I just wrote until I finished. One of my most surprising statements that I wrote while doing this little exercise was, I feel guilty that I don't see my family in person as much i visited my aunt like a few weeks ago it's probably been like a month girl to be really honest but i visited her like very spontaneously and when we were catching up and stuff like that i was like damn i'm missing so much like what is going on with the girls in connecticut like really what is going on and my aunt was just giving me the tea and i was like damn i'm really like missing y'all's lives and because i'm not in in connecticut anymore i don't really get to see them that much and stuff like that which kind of sucks at first i also didn't notice i didn't realize that i was missing my family so much because when i moved i was like yes girl give me distance i need 
time to be me i need time to just live my life and now that i've been living my life away from my family i'm kind of like damn i miss y'all who would have thought <laughs> honestly not me but i think that having that distance is very good it's good it's great with this prompt that i was given i was shocked that i said that because honestly i don't think i would have said that if i really thought about it because i would be like no whatever but because i wrote that and i didn't think like put too much thought into it i was like damn i feel like that <laughs> i feel like that for real another one that made me kind of sad but might not be true anymore is i worry that due to changes happening I might have to put a really big project on hold. In my last video, I said I learned something new about myself in the no reading week and I immediately jump started a new thing for me but like not really fully new i'm still not ready to talk about it yet but i will be soon <laughs> but pretty much i thought that i was gonna have to put this really big project that i'm working on on hold and that really made me sad because like i want to start this career but i can't right now because so many things are happening and i might have to put it on hold however it is now maybe like a week or two it's been a while since i did the exercise so it's been a bit and i don't think it's true anymore i'm still in the process of finalizing some things so i think that i will be able to actually move forward with this project and it's going really really well so those are like the two main ones that really surprised me but it was it was a good thing because that's how i felt even though i didn't think i felt that way that's how i genuinely felt on the inside so the next exercise i did was was the I wish exercise for this exercise there were like 19 lines that just started with I wish I wish I wish I wish I wish and then the last one was I especially wish or I really wish or something like that after doing this exercise I realized that I really needed to tap into my brain power for some reason it was so difficult for me to just write down things that i wished that i had or wanted to experience but at the end of it it was actually pretty fun i know it was supposed to be a speed writing exercise but i genuinely had to take my time because after wish five i was like what else do i want <laughs> literally like what do i want girl what do you want <laughs> i don't know i just didn't know <laughs> once i completed the list and looking through everything that i had wrote down i was like wow there's a lot of things i want to experience that some people would just be like eh, whatever or they'll just be like really like you want to try that and i'm like yeah some examples for my list are i wish to ride a horse take up archery as a hobby learn how to dj and mix songs and learn how to swim <laughs> like i wish i could learn how to swim i don't know how to swim and i want to it seems so fun and i love being in the water i love it so why not learn how to navigate said water that I love. It just makes sense. After looking at my whole list, I was a little shocked by what I put, but like not really because it was very on brand for me. Like, I wanna ride a horse? Yeah, get into it. If I find a horse this year, I'ma ride that bitch. I am a very silly person and there's just like so many different random things I wanna experience in this lifetime that it took a lot out of me to think about. And I don't wanna limit myself because it's cringe or whatever people might think of it. These are things I genuinely just wanna do and they seem fun. Who wouldn't wanna ride a horse? Who? I'm the type of person that's like, I wanna try it at least once, and if I don't like it, well, I learned something new about myself. So that's how I felt about this list. I could've put anything on there, and I'd be like, yeah, okay, fine, I'll try it, but if I don't like it, then it is what it is, at least I tried it. A lot of people can't say that they tried it. So I gotta give myself some, some credit and be like, I'm cringe, but I'm free, baby. Let me ride a horse this year. I've only been talking for so long, and I am just parched. Now we're moving on to the tasks of the week. The first task was to write a list of reasons why I don't believe in a support of God. And I want to preface this by saying that I am not religious at all. And in the beginning of this book, it does specify that you don't have to be religious or anything. Like you could just refer to God as 
whatever you want it to be you know so in my case whenever i say god i'm mostly speaking about the universe that's it i'm not talking about j man himself i'm talking about the universe i also really like that the book specifies this in the beginning because i feel like that definitely would have deterred a lot of people and it could have possibly deterred me if i didn't know what the vibes were already so that's a w for julia cameron girl shout out to you for being big brain you know and being inclusive so with this activity i didn't write a lot but I was very brutally honest with myself and after rereading everything I wrote down the main reason I can't believe in a supportive God is because I can't believe in myself to achieve what I want to achieve like it really is as simple as that sometimes and sometimes it also takes you some time to realize that I believe I am a very confident person slay you know but when it comes to me pursuing my endeavors sometimes I need that little reminder or that little push that I'm that bitch and I can do whatever I set my mind to in this point of my transformation I don't know my sense of self is a little bit warped and I can't confidently believe that I can achieve something big so I get mad at myself and I beat myself up for it but then I turn around and be like it's the universe's fault she not looking out for me right now. I'm not one of God's favorites right now. So I just accept that without, I wouldn't say without even trying because I try, but then it's like not enough to push through that, that self-doubt or whatever it may be. I feel like I have not been this brutally honest with myself in a bit because I had to be realistic. I was like, girl, why don't you believe that you can't do what you want to do? Because it's not making any sense. Where's, where's the bad bitch I'm looking for? Because she's not here opening up the door. I'm at a point where I'm looking for the bad bitch. <laughs> I'm looking for the bad bitch. Like, I know, I know they're in here. I know that the bad bitch is inside. I know. But I'm, like, ripping back these layers to get to it. You know, I'm ripping back the layers to see what is working for me, what isn't working for me, what I need to do, the steps that I need to take to get there, and building up my confidence. Not like self-confidence, you know. It's more so like building up my confidence in my projects. Putting myself out there and just being confident with the work I put out. Next task was list five desires this one was really fun to do i love making mood boards vision boards i love going on pinterest and looking at pretty pictures i love it all i think my desires are pretty self-explanatory these are just things that i like i feel like i've mentioned them a little bit here and there sprinkle sprinkle drop drop i want to curate exhibitions i want to have my own studio i want to move back to the city Girl, don't get me started because I never should have left in the first place. But you know what? You live and you learn and you continue living and learning. And what I learned is some places are not for me. What I need to do for my career, I need to be back in New York. Take bass lessons and learn how to make songs. My little DJ controller and take pole classes. I took a pole class once several years ago when I was like maybe like 18, 19. And I live, laugh, loved it so much that it's still on my mind to this day. But because I never really put my money towards taking those classes, I never did it. So I will be taking pole classes soon. Especially because I want to get into pole fitness. I love being active and stuff like that. But there's just something about being a bad bitch on a pole that I need for myself. The next task is 10 ways I am mean to myself. This task, I was also very, very honest. Because if you're not honest with yourself, how is anything supposed to change? How will you become self-aware if you're not honest with yourself? How are you going to be honest with others if you're not honest with yourself? A penny for your thought, my lady. I think that to a certain extent that we're all mean to ourselves. And not even just like mean, mean, like being like, oh, you bitch at yourself. It's more so like, oh, like I might have made a mistake and I'm giving myself no compassion for it. So I'm going to share five ways that I mean to myself. And I want to encourage you to also look into ways that you're mean to yourself so you can cut that shit out. <laughs> let's stop being mean to ourselves this is our vessel right now this is what we got this is this is where we are so why are we being mean to ourselves i'm saying this to you but i'm also saying this to myself so five ways i am mean to myself are i let my boundaries be crossed 
I put things I really want to do off, i.e. pole dancing. I give myself no compassion or grace when I make mistakes. If I fail, I quit. I am a perfectionist. And that is the meanest thing that I can do to myself. That's the meanest thing that anyone can do to themselves is be a perfectionist because nothing is perfect. So how do you expect things that you do to be perfect? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is. And a little cranium that makes me think that everything has to be perfect all of the time. But that's just that's just what happens. And it, it kind of really sucks because nothing is perfect. So why am I holding myself up to such high expectations? I don't know. But I'm a reforming, not reformed, reforming perfectionist. <laughs> I'm working on it, girl, because I can't continue to live my life like this. I can't. Nothing is perfect. So why should I? I was honest with myself and bad habits that I engage in with myself. But I thought I could take the opportunity to turn it into something beautiful. I wanted to take the idea of something bad and transform it into something else. So that's why I just decided to draw on top of it to give myself that little reminder that even though this is bad, it can still be beautiful. There is still time to make it beautiful. Moving on to task number four was 10 items I would like to own. This was a hard, hard exercise for me because after making the I wish list, after doing the five desires, I was like, what the fuck else do I want? What do I want? I don't know. Right now, because I'm going through so much transformation and stuff like that, my sense of self is warped. So when it comes to thinking about what I want, sometimes it gets a little hard, but I think at the end, it was like, okay, this, this is it, this is it. Once I put everything together, I was like, yeah, this is it. This is what I want. And if somebody like gave me a million dollars, I could get all these things and I'd be happy. And I wouldn't need anything else after that. Three main things that I really, really, really want on my 10 items I would like to own is number one a sphinx kitty <laughs> i want a sphinx cat so bad and i want it to be a black sphinx if i can't get a black sphinx then i could settle for the pink colored one but i really 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 want a black sphinx kitty I already got a name picked out and everything. I got a name picked out. I got nicknames picked out. I got clothes I want to make for the cat. Everything. Uh. And don't I look like I should be a, a Sphinx Kitty owner? You can't tell me I don't look like I should be a Sphinx Kitty owner. Because I do. The second thing that I really, really want is a pole. I want a pole for my own place when I move. And the third thing I would say would have to be the Marc Jacob heels. I want them in two colors. I want them in pink and I want them in black. And then after that, I don't need any more shoes ever again. You could clock me on that. <laughs> don't clock me on that. Those are the main three things that I really, 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 really want. The last task. We have task five. My favorite creative block is... For this task, you just have to list your favorite creative blocks, maybe like five or however much you want to put. But before I started this artist way journey, I did not think I was a people pleaser. I didn't think I was a people pleaser, y'all. I really didn't because I don't know, maybe I was like delusional or something. But after reading the chapters and partaking in the journey, I realized that I am a people pleaser. But I'm specific though. I only people please to people that I care about. If I don't know you, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about you. Well, that was a little mean. If I don't know you, I won't go out of my way, breaking my back trying to please you to get you to like me not that i'm a people pleaser in a way of like if i care about you and you come to me you're like hey x y and z is happening i don't know what to do i'm on that shit i'm like you could do this you could do that i can help you with this i can help you with that you need to get there i'm gonna help you get there you need some support i'm gonna be there with you you know like i'm one of those people i'm solution based you give me a problem not even you give me a problem you come to me for advice i'm gonna give you a solution and then i'm gonna need you to follow it exactly how i say it because that's how you're gonna get the thing solved, you know? Like, I'm one of those people. So at least I have some decorum when it comes to my people-pleasing tendencies. 
but even when i'm pleasing the people well even when i'm people pleasing the people i care about i forget about myself and this book really really put that into perspective for me and in this chapter specifically it was going off the analogy of like oh when people ask you if you're self-destructive you'll most likely say no but then when you think about it and the self-destructive tendencies that you like artists or creative people or whatever your self-destruction is you not putting yourself first it's you giving 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 but not receiving or giving to yourself and i didn't realize this but yeah yeah that's me and it makes so much sense because there was a point when i was like at my lowest in the pits I was so willing to give when I had no energy for myself. I was so willing to give and to help. But when it came to myself, I gave nothing, nothing. I completely abandoned myself to help the people I cared about. And that's what my favorite creative block is. I people please. I give, give, give. I'm not giving back to myself. I'm not being creative. I'm not speaking on my boundaries. I'm not journaling. I'm not doing anything for myself, but I'm giving so much. I'm trying to reform from these habits, but also as the eldest sibling, it's hard for me too because all I want to do is help. All I want to do is make sure that the people I'm I care about feel cared for and like they have a person to go to. And that's what I did for my siblings and that's how I navigate my relationships and stuff. But I have to realize at some point that I can't give when I have nothing to get. Like I can't give nobody nothing if I'm not giving myself anything. Cuz how am I how am I going? How am I running? I'm running on stupid and delusions. <laughs> So it's like, no, let's stop that. But for this task, I listed my favorite creative blocks are overeating, I love reading, procrastinating, slay, perfectionism, people pleasing, and rescuing people when they aren't ready. I wanna talk about the rescuing people when they aren't ready because this shit kinda really gets me. <sighs> like I said, I'm very solution-based, right? Very solution-based. So if I see you're struggling with something, even if you don't ask me, I'm gonna be like, hey like maybe you should try this this might help because i noticed that this this and this is happening you know but sometimes you have to realize when it's time to give up the ghost because not everybody is going to want the help you have to offer or not everybody is ready to receive the help you have to offer and that's something that really sucks for me because especially if it's like i see someone i really care for struggling I want to help you. I want to help you figure it out. I want to help you push you in the right direction, help you do whatever you need to do so you're living your best life too. But sometimes it's not your job. And that sucks. It does. It really, really does. Especially when you care for the person. And you've tried too. The thing is, you have to say, I'm here when you are ready, whenever you are, and then you have to give up the ghost. You have to give it up, y'all. I think the little cartoon that I drew for myself is very accurate because I'm always so quick to help people and keep helping people that I don't take care of myself. So in my little cartoon, I am exhausted. I drew some little bags under my eyes and I have speech bubbles saying like, I'm here for you, I can help you, I can do this for you, I can do that for you. And I have like the little lines attached to myself of all the other things that I'm also doing at once. I'm infamous for putting too many things on my plate because I don't wanna say I love to procrastinate, I just do. I think everybody does. I tend to put a lot of things on my plate because I procrastinate and then I get to a point where I'm like, all right, bitch, you gotta get this shit done. And then I give myself a whole bunch of shit to do. I put everybody else before myself and I wanna stop that, especially this year because not a lot of people are worth the energy that I have to offer. And it's a sad truth, but it is the truth.
Happy Artist Day Day! Yes, today is another Artist Day. For today's Artist Day, I'm going to be reading this very big art book that I thrifted like a few years ago. Let's get into it because I'm excited to read through this book. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. I'm just gonna give my final remarks about how the week went and then that will be it. This week, I had a lot of realizations that I didn't think I would have. And I think that's my favorite part of this entire journey because I'm realizing things in a different perspective, meaning that like, it could be things that are new, but because I have this new perspective on it, it makes more sense. So I'm like, ah, okay, okay, like, yeah, two plus two does equal four. But the main thing that I learned this week is that my sense of self is a little out of whack. And I need to reel it in, girl. I need to reel it in and get that shit together because that's not going to fly any longer. It can't fly any longer because how is it that I can barely answer things that I want? Another thing I realized is that I've been holding myself back. I have been I have been sometimes we get in our own way and I would say that's okay but it's not okay I'm very hard on myself because I have such high expectations for myself and I gotta learn to give myself grace I gotta learn to give myself grace to give myself more compassion to be like I tried my best and that was the best that I could do at the time I can always learn from my mistakes and which I do but it's like I don't let nobody see me fail and sometimes maybe that's what you need in order to get that bigger push for you to keep going sometimes you have to fail to go and that's okay because you learn something new in the process and that's what's most important the fact that you're learning something new and you're redirecting, pivoting, whatever you need to do to have a better outcome next time. An affirmation I've been focusing a lot on right now is all I have to do is try my best and everything will work out exactly as it's supposed to because that's literally all I can do is try my best. <laughs> like all I can do is try my best and I have to let go of perfectionism. I have to let go of wanting to control everything. I just have to let myself flow and just literally try my absolute best and nothing can go wrong when i just try my best so yeah that's what i learned this week to try my best to flow and to get my sense of self in check giddy 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 girl with that being said thank you for watching this video thank you for listening to me chat about i don't know a bunch of stuff i feel like i was talking for it ever but i wanted to try something new for this week's video and i hope you like it next week i'll be at the halfway mark of the artist way and i'm very excited to do that so yeah thank you for being here and thank you for being you you're awesome you're spectacular don't be hard on yourself babe don't be hard on yourself you're trying your best and that's all we're doing we're all trying our best have a good day have a good evening have a good afternoon have a good night have a good time and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.